come, one with a testimony and one with the word of God. Amen. First of all, we're going to have John. He's going to come with a testimony. I'm going to introduce both of these guys so I can just sit down. Amen. Amen. Just to this phrase that I'm going to here. Uh, first of all, we thank God for John, uh, just a man of faith that's come to see the faith ministries. Amen. This man, he came on fire. Amen? Amen. 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 Next thing I seen when he came in, a, um, in this building, I seen him dancing and shouting. I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> Up in here. He was setting us on fire. And I thank God for his faithfulness. He's not only faithful to the Salem Church, but the Albany Church. He's just a faithful guy all yeah. around. And he yeah. has a great testimony. And, you know, and the other gentleman that I want to introduce, I want to uh, say to Jermaine, I'm godly proud of him. Uh, matter of fact, I'm godly proud of all the ones here at Cedar Bay, the one ministers that carry on. Uh, last you Sunday, I uh, wasn't able to make it down to Albany. But um, and I was going through something tremendously. You know, preachers go through some things sometimes. <laughs> that's why I preached that word this morning. If it had not been, because that's what I was going through. Uh, and I was just going through something tremendously. I felt like, God, that I hadn't accomplished what you wanted me to accomplish. Even though all the things that I was doing in the community, it seemed like things were just not going well. And God allowed me to sit back and to see what was really going on. And so I didn't go to Albany and I didn't, um, I stayed here in Salem, but I said, you know what? I just want to hear a word from the Lord. And I went over to State Street Church of God, and Jermaine, he was speaking at State Street. He told, he, had, he came and he did it in order. Like some preachers don't do it in order. They think they grown. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you may be big and grown, but you ain't grown yet. Amen. But he did it in order. He said, uh, Pastor, Pastor Brown wanted me to come speak. And, uh, can I go? I said, yeah, go, man. He did not know what I was going through. And so I went over to State Street Church of God, and my old church, my old stomping grounds, and I just wanted to see hear the atmosphere. And, and he preached the word, and I was so godly proud of him. I videoed him and everything. I was so godly proud of this young man coming in and stepping in Cedar Faith because I'm always honored when people come and come and be a part of Cedar Faith ministry because sometimes as preachers you feel like you're inadequate. Nobody will ever follow you. And when he came and joined and was part, I was godly proud. And then when I heard him speak a word over there, I was even more proud of him. And then I said, Lord, I thank you for who he is. But then I came back here to see the faith. And the house was packed. And the young people, Josh, AJ, Kelsey, different ones, was carrying on the service. And they were carrying on as though I wasn't even there. And some folks, some preachers would get upset. How can that happen? I ain't in the room. I'm not the star. <laughs> well, they carried on. And I thank God because it made me realize that if I leave here tomorrow, yeah. everything is taken care of. Yeah. 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 And so that made me so proud to see them go forward. And Jermaine, I'm just going to say to you, man of God, go forward, go forward. Don't look back but look forward. Yeah. Like David said, I look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to have John come. Hey. The next upcoming preacher. Oh. Come. Yeah. And we'll test him on the time. I don't know about you guys, but I know I'm here for two reasons. God and his preaching. I'm just saying. He preaches the word, okay? <laughs> so a lot of you have heard most of my testimony. I want to skip very beginning and go to from when I started coming here. Because that's kind of where God has me at right now. I, mean, I was asking Tyler and, and these guys earlier, I go, have you ever asked God to show you where you would be and what would happen to you if you wouldn't have come to him? I did that the other night, just the other night. And I went to bed and I started having a dream. And it was pretty scary. I would not be here today. I would have been killed. That's the dream I had. And somebody literally stabbed me in the chest. Walked up to me and stabbed me. I had, a, I had a dream of an old club I used to hang out at and deal drugs. And somebody came up and killed me. And when you think, when I think of that reality, it's just like, 
I can't believe where I am right now. I was the guy in church that sat way back over there in the corner <clears throat> and didn't make a sound. And now the guy that sits up over here, I'm probably a little bit too loud, but that's just yeah. the way it is. <laughs> you know, because I'm at a point now in my life where I don't care what the other people in here think. I I care about what he thinks about me not making any noise. Okay? So it all started with prayer here. It started with with our. our when we opened up for daily prayer every day here in the church, and, and Mike and I would come every morning we were here. Every morning. And it was going good. And then Bob and I, Pastor Bob and I were talking, and, and he says, you know, try this. He says, try try waiting on the Lord. Ask the Lord for something. And just sit there and be quiet and hear what he has to say. Mm -hmm. And that's where it started. Mm -hmm. And it started right there and gave up cigarettes. Hey, amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Got a job. That job didn't really pan out, okay? It wasn't for me. So I then I actually got another job that it hadn't started yet. And before it could, now I've been offered a better deal than that that I'm going to go into. <laughs> and it just gets better. They're all big. It's better. It's just better. And this is more, this is where God wants me. What's going to happen now is where, definitely where God wants me to be working, where God wants me to be. I know that. <clears throat> so now I'm like, the wife's gone for about a month or so, visiting some relatives. And uh, so she was the only one working part-time. And so we literally, our money, my money's tight. And uh, I mean, just praying, just praying. That's all you can do, man, just pray about it. The other day, a brother walked up and gave me some money. Um, and, then, and then today, I met today, Kelsey says, come here for a minute. And I, and I go, yeah, what's up? And she goes, well, I got some money for you. I'm like, what? And she goes, yeah, remember when you helped me out? You gave me money for the kids. When she was taking donations for the kids for violins, and I was giving her money and stuff, and I got to a point, I guess, where they just they, they couldn't use the money. They didn't need it anymore. And today she tells me, yeah, I got that money. I'm just going to give it back to you. Amen. You know? And that literally covers everything I need to here know about my son but I've been he's been wrestling with a lot of things my son bit, definitely through his 20s has mirrored me as to what I did through my 20s and I, I didn't know this till just the other day but I had taken out the fridge out to run some errands and after doing that I dropped him at his house so I started heading home and for some reason I'm going a different way home it was kind of a way that didn't even make sense it was like why am I going this way this doesn't make sense and and so anyway I'm like oh well I'm, I'm, you know, I'll get home I guess and so I was going down D Street instead of the way I usually go and I thought well that's okay I'll turn it to high school then I'll go down 14th and then take a right go that way but then when I got to 17th I took a left and I'm like what am I doing I was gonna turn it 14th and I'm like, oh well. And so I get up to the next light. And I'm sitting at the light, and I look up, and here's these two guys crossing the street in front of me. One guy's talking to the other guy, and he says whatever he says, something blah blah blah. <clears throat> Keeps on walking, and looks over at me, and goes, "Hey, how's it going?" And I realize it's my son. And he looks at me and goes, "Whoa!" And he realizes it's me, and he gets in the car, and we take off, and we're driving, and he just starts crying. And he's, he's telling me stuff. He says, I mirrored you. I did everything you did. He said, I got into dealing drugs and then collected money and, and, and beating people up to collect money and doing what I had to to collect money. And 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 it's it's just terrible. It, it, he's been mimicking me on Facebook and giving me a bad time about being a Christian. And, oh, I know he's faking it. And, and nothing against you, Pastor. He came to church here once. He used to tell me, your pastor looks like a pimp. I'm like, what? <laughs> I said, okay, whatever. You know? And he's just like, and I'm sorry I said that. He goes, I'm sorry I should have never said that about him. And I'm sorry oh, that I, I said that about you. And I'm sorry that I laughed about the lady that hit the floor that night 
when I came to church. <laughs> and I'm sorry about all of that. And he says, you're right. Jesus is the way. Amen. Amen. to him and say things to him and I would go to talk and nothing would come out and nothing would come out and, and then God finally just says you know just, just listen just listen you don't need to say anything he knows just listen so we drove around for I don't know an hour or more and I just listened and at the end he goes okay can you take me over he wanted me to take him down over to his family be with his wife and he says uh, I just appreciate the fact that, that you just listened and you didn't say anything and I'm just like, thank you, God, for keeping my mouth shut. Because that was the right thing. That's what he needed. And I said, you know, sometimes people don't need to tell you anything. You just need people to listen to you. Amen. And uh, so God didn't, you know, and I didn't think of it. It didn't hit me, but I, I dropped him off. I got to the house. I called my wife. She's like, what did you, did you give him the word? Did you say the Lord's Prayer? I mean, you know, did you sit his prayer with him? You know, and I'm like, oh, man. And then I felt so guilty. I'm like, I didn't do that. Oh, no. And, and I was kind of feeling bad about it. But then the next night was Saturday. Last night was Saturday night. And, and we went, I went to church with Pastor Bob and them. And last Saturday was all night prayer. And Pastor Bob said, God's told me that everybody that's here tonight at this all night prayer, that within the next seven days, each one of you will get a miracle. <laughs> of some kind or another. <laughs> Last night was the seventh night. And I'm sitting in church and I get a text message from my son that says, I'm in Portland and I walked into a church tonight and I got on my knees and I said the sinner's prayer. Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> Just to say what it all comes from is one thing that Pastor Bob said to me, was listen, just take time to listen to what God has to say to you. Give him a minute to talk. Don't try to figure it out. It's easier just to, it's easier to listen, you know? And, and we want to argue with him or we want to question him because he's, he's a father in me. He's our father. Just like the father that you were born, you know, mother, and just like a kid because we're his children. We want to sit there and question everything. Well, can I kind of do it this way? Can I? No, you can't. You can't, guys. You got to do it his way. Yes, and if you do Amen. it his way, and if you pray every day, study the, all the stuff I didn't used to do in church, that I and I do it now. I'm telling you, man, all my anger is gone. All my I, I just tell people anytime now when I sit, I'm leaving. I say, God bless you. The cash register guy. God bless you. God Amen. bless you. Yep. And people just look at you like what? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? That's crazy. You know, but it hits them. It's, that's the seed right there. That's the seed. That's all it takes. That's all we got to do is plant those little seeds. I planted a seed. Uh, Shirley shared with me, Sister Shirley, just let it go. When it came to my son, just let him go. Don't argue with him. Don't push it. Yeah. Just pray about it. It Amen. works. Mm -hmm. And it did. Amen. Amen. It did. Amen. God will do it in his time. But the big key that Pastor Bob taught me, and everybody, they all need to listen. Obedience. Amen. It's that simple. Tough word. You be obedient to God, and things will happen in your life. Amen. Pastor Bob told me a long time ago, he sat me in a chair, and he said, you're going to be an evangelist. You're going to be, but it's going to be places where other people can't go. Well, other pastors aren't going to be able to walk because of the way they look and their fancy clothes and whatever. But you're going to be able to go there and people are going to listen to you. And I just got all excited and got ahead of myself. And I wanted to preach. And then when other guys were getting to preach, I was getting mad. And then I got to clean the parking lot. Oh. You know, clean the, what? Cleaning the parking lot was just a big deal to God. As the guys were up yes. there. <laughs> Amen. And when that, that was the lesson he wanted me to learn from that. Yeah. Amen. Because you know, I'm not up here for me today. <laughs> Back then, if I would have got to preach what I wanted, when I wanted to, I would have been up here for me. God put me in that parking lot, and a man came in that parking lot that day. 
and ended up coming to see the faith all in church. Amen. You know, he's a church, he was, that's the kind of church he told me he was looking for. But if I hadn't been out there cleaning the parking lot, I'd been up there preaching, I wouldn't have seen him. He wouldn't have known. Amen. So you see, you got to follow, you get there. You'll get there. There's no problem about that. You'll get here. If this is where he wants you, then in his time. It's in his time. Just be obedient. Listen to him. And, and just be cool with it. Don't try to push it. Don't try to push it. Don't worry. What other people think when you're jumping up and down and acting crazy Amen. in church. Because if you're worried about it, then I'm more worried about what he thinks that I'm not jumping up and down, you know. So that's just the way it is. Anyway, God bless all you guys. Amen.